G'day guys and girls. Today I want to teach you how to read a histogram, why it's so important and how it can improve your landscape photography. We're going to find out this beautiful location, so stick around and roll that intro. G'day guys and girls and thank you for joining me at this epic location here once again in Montenegro. How to read a histogram and why it's so important. It can improve your landscape photography, sometimes 5%, but if you do not know how to read a histogram, you might as well walk backwards in your photography. It is so important. But on this channel, I've did plenty of tips, tricks, and reviews, saving you time and money in your landscape photography. But mainly, we love to get out in places like this, epic parts of this beautiful world, and do some landscape photography. So if that interests you after this, please drop below and subscribe for future content. But how can one simple thing, reading a histogram, on your camera improve your landscape photography or any photography for that matter. That is what we're gonna go through today. It's so important, 5%, 10% extra in your photography. On this channel, I talk so much about capturing images in camera to work on them in post-production, to getting enough information. This is what I'm talking about, reading a histogram to make sure you've got all your shadows, midtones, and highlights to take it back in post-production and capture that image that you witnessed, that beautiful image to post process it. So that's what we're gonna do. Let's jump into this epic location and find out how to read a histogram. You were my best friend. Didn't care about the rules, good on the weekends. I'll be in fools, drifting the deep space. So brave and so stupid, just like the movies. How it's gonna stay in the fight with you. Okay guys, so this is why it's so important to learn how to read your histogram because we've got different things such as long exposure photography, exposure bracketing, time blend, all these type of photography that I take you through in just landscape photography. So when you can say you're a landscape photographer, you can be many things inside this landscape photography. But it doesn't matter what you do, whether it's portrait, landscape, anything, architecture, you need to learn how to read a histogram. It's telling you the information of what you've got. I recently done a RAW versus JPEG vlog, which is actually very important to this because when we shoot JPEG, we're actually compressing the image. So we need to knuckle down and make sure we've got everything in the histogram that it's telling us from shadows, highlights, and midtones. When we shoot RAW, we've got a little bit of play, especially these days when we're shooting with the new mirrorless cameras. Huge dynamic range, we can capture almost two stops either end, which is fantastic. But we don't want to do that because, as I said, shadow will introduce noise when we bump it up. So how can we counteract that? We read the histogram. So if I show you the perfect histogram here, on the left-hand side is shadows. Now if that's peaking on the left-hand side, we've lost information in the shadows. On the right-hand side, same goes. If it's peaking, the highlights are blown out and we're very, very hard to get that information back, such as clouds or trees or whatever it is in the highlights. But when we get to a location like I am now, I'll talk you through basically what I'm seeing. I'm shooting at about 14 mil on the XF 10 to 24. Obviously we've got the highlights with no clouds in the sky, so that's gonna read out basically one exposure itself. The mountain just in front of us, the left hand side's a little bit darker because the sun's sitting on the right hand side. But the really hard part about this is the river underneath is highlights because obviously it's reflecting. Then we've got the trees below us, which is a little bit not as bright, but still bright. So you can see we've got extreme highlights, extreme shadows, and midtones. It's very hard to catch that in one single exposure. The further the sun goes down, the better we're gonna capture that. So what I'm doing now is reading the histogram. So if I put it on zero, where I'm reading the whole scale, it's giving me really bad crushed blacks, I, almost impossible to get back. So what I wanna do is go through an exposure bracket straight away. Exposure bracketing, at plus one. Now, because the zero, what it's allowing me to do is get the highlights intact. Plus one and plus two is allowing for the shadows on the left-hand side of the hill, which I talked about, and also the foreground foliage. Therefore, when we get back into post-production, we can blend it all together, and we've got an image that's gonna read out a zero EV, or a perfect histogram, almost a rolling hill. That's what we're trying to achieve right now. Whether it's five exposures, seven exposures, whatever it is, 
reading the histogram, getting the information back, taking it into post-production, getting contrast, um, saturation, vibrance, all this stuff back to achieve the perfect image. That's what I'm gonna do now. And later on, you're going to see when the sun goes down, I can almost capture it back in a single exposure. So now I'm gonna expose your bracket, two second timer, F9, same old for landscape photography and capture this beautiful image. Okay guys, while the sun goes down, I wanna to explain to you a few things that we could do in camera, in post-production, alongside of that. But the image I just showed you, I wanna take you through basically what was going through my mind in the process of capturing this image. So, the plus two I wanted for the left-hand side of the mountain because obviously it's exposure, exposure plus two compared to the overall image. So it's gonna get back most of that uh, shadows and not introduce noise. The plus one which I'm gonna use for basically the overall image. So I'm gonna use it as the base image and the other two images blend into this. The zero I'm gonna use for the uh, sky because obviously it was massively blown out reading the histogram. Now, when I blend this back together in post-production, it should give me a near perfect histogram. If it doesn't, this is what I wanna explain. If it doesn't, you haven't captured enough information in camera as far as shadows and highlights to get this information back in post-production to make the perfect histogram, let's say. But what we can do in camera whilst we're here, not in post-production, are things like filters, okay? We can use drop-in filters. So in this situation, I would love to use a half grad, like a soft uh, three stop, six stop, slide it in, reduce that, and the best thing about a histogram is it's live. It's giving you the information in camera, what you need to know. It's not telling you after, it's not telling you before. As you make changes, it's telling you in camera. Okay, so I took the polarizer on the front to try and pop out some of the vibrance, to get the vibrance back, although it did. The issue was because the river comes around, it's getting rid of that glare. Now to me, because it's so still here, so quiet, that glare adds something to the image. It, for me, it's giving more scale than anything. So scale into the background on both sides and making the mountain in the middle pop out. So I didn't want to introduce that. I could have blended it in post-production again, but I didn't choose to do this. So if you've got filters, slide them in. If you want to use long exposure, six stop, whatever it is, you can do that. But guys, everything is telling you in camera to read the histogram. Now, I'm gonna do the old photographer's thing, sit, wait patiently for the light to get a bit lower and try and get some blue hour photography also to see if I can capture a histogram with just one exposure in the same location. Rightio guys, no Rip River Sunset is going to occur tonight, but that is not what we're here for. How to read a histogram and why reading a histogram will improve your photography. I've got one massive power tip that you must know coming up, but what if you can't expose your bracket? You don't own post-production side of things, Adobe, whatever it is. You don't own filters, you don't own polarizer. What will you do in camera to capture the image? Now, this is what I wanna talk about. The sun's gone right down. The highlights and shadows have gotten less further apart, let's say, they've gotten closer together. So we can try and achieve this in the one single composition, in the one image. So when I'm exposing for this image, so everything's the same, F9, 160 ISO, nothing's changed in the composition, focusing, etc. But what has changed is we're single exposuring now with, as I said, no filters or anything like that. So the massive power tip that I've got in this situation is always expose to the right. 
Now, what do I mean by that? Always expose for the highlights. The shadows are a bit easier to recover, especially in modern cameras, but the highlights, once they're blown out, I find very, very hard. And this is what I want you to do. Head out with your camera and shoot single exposure in massive dynamic range situations, just like I'd done on the JPEG versus RAW images. I was so impressed with JPEG quality out of Fujifilm. Not about color, anything like that, how much information you can get back from shadows and highlights that are still readable straight out of camera. It's very, very impressive. So that's what you need to do. One, head out with your camera, situations like this, wherever you can, locally, whatever, on next holiday, and expose for a single bracket and understand how much you can push your information in camera. Then you can learn things like exposure bracketing, by filters, whatever you need to do. But here, for me to expose to the right, you can see behind me, got the river still, the little to no sunset has occurred. I am now exposing at plus one. So what I'm doing is my meter reading for exposure is the whole image, not spot metering, the whole image. At zero, it's crushing the blacks so much, like I would never be able to get them back. But as soon as I bump up to plus one, I'm getting peaks on both sides. So what that's gonna do is I'm gonna recover highlights okay, shadows okay, to get that readable histogram. Maybe not perfect because of no exposure bracketing, but get a readable histogram. But guys, let me know in the comments below, how much information can you push out of your JPEG, RAW, whatever, from what camera you own? Do you know? If you don't know, get outdoors tomorrow, next week. You must know this. Can you read a histogram? Have you learned something today? Let me know in the comments below. I'm always interested in hearing from you guys. But this is not me done for months today. Go, I will see you guys on the next one, definitely in the mountains, back where we love to be. I'll see you guys then. Ciao. G'day guys and girls, today we're going to a beautiful location. No, what can I say is that?